Hello and welcome to the Green Bay Packers edition of The Grueling Truth, brought to you by Gridiron Mall, a new interactive app that lets you call what you think the offense or defense will do in a live NFL game, and then see what others around the country pick as well. That's Gridiron Mall. Go to gridironmall.com. I am Evan Wittalison, joined as always by the marvelous Troy Trotovic, and uh, Troy... Quick question for you, as we're nearing the end of the year. It's December 17th, and this is a time of year, you know, it's, it's, it's not football related, um, but this is a time of year people start coming up with, uh, um, you know, New Year's resolutions. They want to lose 20 pounds over the year or lose 30 pounds. They, they, they're going to quit smoking. They're going to quit, quit uh, drinking or whatever they want to do. Are you one that tends to have New Year's resolutions uh, when the New Year starts, or or no? Nope, I have not made a New Year's resolution in probably 20 years. And here's my quick thought, not to go off on a tangent. Um, I look at it from the standpoint, why do you need to wait for one day to change your life? And why do you need to wait till the first day of a new year when... If I want to make that change, why don't I put my mind to it and do it now? So, yeah. you know, I've never, I've never, I, I shouldn't say I've never. Uh, I have, I used to, and then I just realized, and uh, I'll say this, I, I honestly realized this, uh, God rest her soul, my mother passed away uh, at the age of 56 years old. Uh, that's when I kind of woke up and I said, you know what? If you're going to do something and you want to do something, do it now and don't wait. And that's really I haven't made, and that was a long time ago, and that's nearly 20 years ago, that I haven't made a New Year's resolution because I don't okay. really need to do it in one day. And like you said, everyone I know, Evan, that makes these, they last for a little bit. And jokingly, I'll ask them a month later, and they're like, oh, no, I, I stopped doing that. So, yeah, that's well, kind of my thought, thought on that. What about yeah. you? Yeah, you, you bring up a perfect point, and I don't personally. I, I stopped uh, doing this, too. I don't know exactly how long ago. Kind of the same thing as you. You know, why wait for January 1 to make a life-changing, uh, life-deciding change when you can do it uh, today? And that's kind of why I brought it up. Um, and this is going to be cliche here. I just talked about uh, not signing up for New Year's resolutions or whatever. But back in 2011, I signed up on January 1st for a gym membership at Experience Fitness and Racine. And I didn't do it for a New Year's resolution thing. I did it because they had a sale going that you could sign up for $1 instead of the $49 fee that they usually charge. And I was determined, in Dece- you know, in December of 2011, I was having some health issues that – you know, because of my weight, I was suffering, it seemed like, every day from heartburn that hurt so bad that I actually had to go to the, you know, to the hospital to get treated. That's how bad it was. Nothing was working. And the first time I got it, I didn't know what it was. I just had pain and discomfort in my chest. And I'm like, holy crap, I don't know what this is. Am I having, you know, I'm too young to have a heart attack. or that be it? I don't know. So I went to the hospital and got treated for extreme uh very bad heartburn, and I decided in December of that year, it's time for me to make a lifestyle change, not a New Year's resolution, a lifestyle change, and I began a journey back in 2011 to get fit, and since then, and if you listen to Red Light Sports Rambo religiously, you know this, I've dropped uh, about 90 pounds since then, and it's because I decided to make a lifestyle change, and now I use the uh, these body products like Shakeology and 21 Day Fix and Max 30 and P90X3 and you know programs like that, and I'm uh, I've been, I'm in the best shape of my life too now. You know I lost the weight in 2011, and you know I trucking along in 2012. It wasn't until I decided to try Beach Body that I actually got to the the best shape of my life. And I asked this because I'm looking for people that are wanting to be committed to bettering their health. I'm a fitness coach. I want to help other people better themselves, better their health. And I reach out for to you because I know how difficult it can be 
It can be very difficult by yourself, but when you have a, a team of people, a group of people to work with to reach your goals, it's much, much easier. So if, if it's something you might be interested in, and it doesn't matter if you live in Anchorage, Alaska, or Miami, Florida, um, you can live anywhere in the country, um, even Canada, and I can work with you because I do uh, accountability groups via Facebook, and I will com communicate via Facebook, conference call, you name it, for me to keep you accountable. I have some programs and some, uh, some products that I think can help you reach your fitness goals. And if you want to learn more, shoot me an email, coachevan66 at gmail.com. And let me uh, help you, you know, take charge of your life like I have now, and I want to help you do the same. So that's coachevan66 at gmail.com. And speaking of team, we do have Packers to talk about, and I apologize for our listeners for you know, who are expecting to hear Packers right away, I apologize, because I wanted to let people know that I'm here to help them. But the Packers, speaking of team, they uh, played the Dallas Cowboys last Sunday and got the victory. They got the 28-7 to victory. It's more of, a, more of a complete game than they've had pretty much all year. The defense played well. The running game was dominant. Aaron Rodgers was, uh, you know, Decent. I'm not going to say he was. He excelled, but 22 of 35 is nothing to you know hang your hat on. And they beat the Cowboys. And the big thing was Troy was running the football. Lacey had 24 carries for 124. Starks had 11 for 71. Cobb had three for nine. Coon had one for two. Rogers had three scrambles for 27 yards. Between Lacey and Starks, they ran the ball 35 times, and they passed the ball 35 times. They ran the ball more than they threw the ball. And that's something, Troy, we've been talking about for quite a while that we need to see the Packers do. they got to commit to the running game. And it was, to me, it was quite impressive seeing the Packers just dominate the Cowboys at the line of scrimmage uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, other than two big runs to McFadden and one 22-yard run to Turbin, the Packers shut down the Cowboys pretty well, too. So good win, 28-7. Uh, just a quick before we jump to the why I mean the uh, Packers next opponent the Raiders. Just a quick you know minute or two assessment of this Packer Cowboy matchup before we move on. Yeah, well, for those that want to listen to a more in depth uh, version of Evan and I recapping that game, go to the Red Lake Sports Network dot com. Check out the archive episode. Uh, you hit it on the head, Evan. We we've been talking about it for weeks. We said the way that this Packer offense gets more consistent is to establish the running game and the one-two punch of Lacey and Starks. Uh, you had mentioned it on the show Monday night, uh, James Starks, 30-yard run. Basically, you know, that run gave him a lead. I know the Cowboys came back and scored. But the reason for that run is that you got Eddie Lacey pounding, bruising, basically – tiring out that Cowboy defense. And I'm not saying James Starks didn't make a great run and the line didn't do their job, but when you can have a bruiser like Eddie Lacy get going and then a backup like James Starks, that is a very good one-two combination. The Packers dominated that way. And defensively, Evan, uh, the quick recap there, they shut down Des Bryant. I know Matt Castle was at quarterback, but they shut down Des Bryant and they did it collectively – Sam Shields went out with an injury. Rollins had to come in, and they did it as a unit and defensively played very well against an inept Dallas Cowboys offense, and you expected them to do what they did. Uh, for those that listen to the show regularly, I said that I thought that the Packers could keep them out of the end zone. They nearly did. They allowed one touchdown. But that's how inept that Cowboy offense is, and the defense, they, they came to play and they did their job. And so quite happy, overall, very good game. Uh, special teams uh, did well, uh, limiting return yards. And so it was a step in the right direction, Evan. There's a couple things that I'll talk about tonight that they've got to do against or eliminate against the Raiders if they want to be able to go out west and get a win. Yeah, now speaking of going out west in the wind, they played the Oakland Raiders, 3.05 uh, Central Time Sunday. Kind of an odd start time. 
So right now, Packers are three-point favorites uh, to win. Um, I'm sure if the Packers are playing more consistent, uh, uh, more consistent football, they'll be better than three-point favorites. But the Packers have played from since the early '90s to now. They played the Raiders just five times. Packers have won all of them. 1999 meetings, the only one that's been competitive. And I'm sure we all remember the, I believe it was the 2003 meeting when uh, Brett Favre just had the game of his life on the uh, day after his father passed away. The Raiders, though, much better than they've been in those other matchups. The quarterback they have is really good in Derek Carr, nice young quarterback. Um, Jack Del Rio is a pretty solid coach, nothing special. But he's a solid coach. He gets his players to play hard for him, which I think uh, is a very important. Bill Musgrave is the offensive coordinator for the for the Raiders. Packer and Packer fans should remember that name because he was the coordinator for the Vikings in the past. Um, and he does a lot of uh, empty sets and gets the ball fast. He uses two running backs, two tight ends a lot as well. Oakland would prefer to pound the ball but they haven't been running it very well lately, so they haven't been uh, running it much. Uh, they've averaged 67.2 yards per uh, yard per game, 2.9 yards per carry over the last five weeks. They're 15th in points, uh, tied for 17th in giveaways, and 20th in yards. Wide receiver core led by Amari Cooper and Michael Crabtree. Crabtree seems to have, uh, you know, seems to have. Uh, found the fountain of youth. He's at 70 catches for 642 on the year. And Amari Cooper, young running back out of Alabama, who has just been incredible, 62 catches for 920 yards and 14.8 yards per reception. He has just been an amazing young receiver. Um, running quarterback uh, Derek Carr, uh, he's passed for 3,300 yards, 28 touchdowns to nine interceptions. Uh, it's only been sacked 19 times. It's 96.5 quarterback rating. Quarterback that's getting the job done pretty well. Doesn't turn it over a lot. And he uh, doesn't get sacked a lot because the way it's set up, they get the ball out fast. Running game, uh, Latarius, Latarius Murray has not been running very well as of late. He's their running back threat. Over the last five games, he's averaged 49 yards per game and 2.99 yards per carry. Um, offensive line, pretty good offensive line. They uh, protect the quarterback well. Um, they just don't uh, do the uh, run block in the best um, as they haven't ran the ball well lately. Now, Oakland, they're a team that's going to throw the ball a lot. They've thrown it 455 times at, for Derek Carr. Uh, he's thrown it 455 times this year. Um, but sure, they're going to throw the ball a lot. Um, that's just who they are and they want to attack you vertically with uh, Cooper. And Michael Crafter, he's a guy that's he's a very big, strong receiver. He's going to run very crisp routes, and he's got strong hands. That's going to be the biggest issue for Green Bay is covering Cooper and Crabtree, especially since Sam Shields, it doesn't look like he's going to be available. Shields is going through the concussion protocol, and uh, it's very, very unlikely that he's going to play um, this week. So that's going to be key because that's going to be uh, Rando and Rollins covering Cooper and uh, Crabtree this week. So that's going to be the key, the, the, uh, the biggest matchup, the key matchup in this, uh, in this game. So we'll see how, how, that, ha- how that does in this, uh, in this game. So defensively, Pac has got to get Carr uncomfortable. He's a young quarterback. He's not been playing like a young quarterback. Uh, he's he's kind of faded out the last couple weeks, uh, the past few weeks. But you know, he's a quarterback that can run a little bit too, and he he uh, protects the football. They got to get, they get pressure on him, and they got to get him uncomfortable. I, you know, you got to get young quarterbacks uncomfortable. That's how they make mistakes. Um, if they can get him uncomfortable by getting him off the spot, they should be okay. Um, but the key, as I said, is going to be Rollins and Randall. They're going to have to step up and play a strong game, as well Clinton Dix and uh, uh, Morgan Burnett. They're going to have to, one of those two, depending on the size Cooper's on, they're going to have to give over-the-top safety help because Cooper's going to look to get over the top of the defense. And he runs 
extremely well route, uh, extremely good routes, and he's great with the uh, the double move. But I see a, I see the Packers ha- not having much of an issue stopping the running game if they can make the, the Raiders one dimensional and first force uh, Carr to throw it a lot. I think the Packers should be okay in this one, um, especially if they can rattle Carr a little bit and, uh, you know, get their hands on a couple footballs. Um, you know, the turnover ratio for the Raiders is at zero. They have that those nine interceptions. And, the, you know, defensively for the Raiders, which we'll get into in a minute, they don't, turn, they don't force too many turnovers either. So when you look at this matchup, Troy, this Packers defense versus the Raiders offense, the uh, six and seven Oakland Raiders uh, still have an outside shot looking in at the playoffs. When you look at this Raiders offense versus Packers defense, what are your thoughts? Is this a game the Packers might struggle to get the Raiders off the field, a la against San Diego, or is this a game where the Packers should have a much better matchup, a la uh, Dallas or uh, uh, St. Louis earlier this year? No, I, I think this is a this is a real six and seven Raiders team, Evan. Uh, I think Jack Del Rio has established a, a nice structure, a nice program in Oakland. Uh, I'm going to say the same thing I said last week. Uh, offensively, the key is going to be stopping Murray. Uh, I know you mentioned he struggled as of late. Well, the Packers need to keep him struggling because this is a guy that can have his moments, and just like McFadden. If you, if you let the guy get going, getting into a groove, all of a sudden Derek Carr can play action. Like you said, he has Amari Cooper. Uh, Crabtree's done some, some nice stuff for him. Uh, but if you get the running game going and then you put the element of play action in, then it becomes a long day for this Packers defense. Uh, I, I like Amari Cooper, and I'm going to – have confidence in this Packers secondary, even with no Sam Shields. Uh, I had mentioned it before about what they did to Des Bryant. I know Des Bryant dropped a couple balls, but part of dropping balls too is when you're a receiver, it could be because you think you're covered. And they were doing a pretty darn good job, the, the Green Bay Packers secondary, of coverage against the Cowboys. You know, you're never going to play a whole 60 minutes and just blanket receivers the whole time. There's going to be guys open at times. Just can't do it. I, I've not recalled any game where any team for 60 minutes has never let a receiver get open. But my big key here defensively, Evan, is really the same key against the, that I had against the Cowboys. They've got to win on first down, and that means stopping Murray. If they can stop Murray and basically eliminate the threat of a run, then – I think you make the Raiders one-dimensional, and I will take that matchup, Derek Carr against our secondary, in favor of the Packers any day. Uh, he's a good young quarterback, and he's, he's progressing, and he's going to be a good one in this league. Cooper is going to continue to develop. I believe he's got over 60 catches already this year. Uh, I don't have the stats up in front of me. You might have them up. But I think he's what got receiver over, was that? Uh, Mari Cooper. I think he's got oh, yeah, 60. Cooper's- He's got 62 for 920 with four touchdowns. Yeah, a very good year. And he's only going to get better. I I like this kid. I like the pick when he came out. Uh, He's going to develop. But right now, when you look at the two teams going into this week, I just like the way the Packers' defense is playing. And the only way to, to continue this momentum defensively, again, is to win on first down, make second and long for the Raiders, force them into must-pass situation. And uh, Cooper's going to get his catches. Cooper's going to get five to eight catches, probably get about 100 yards. That's because he's the go-to guy. The Raiders are going to have to pass the ball if they have a chance to beat the Packers. However, it, it's going to go back. If they can get them into a situation where it has to be a passing situation, the way that Capers has substituted and used that front seven to apply pressure, keep guys fresh, I like what's going on. You had mentioned Carr gets rid of the ball fast. Great. Let's make, make him get rid of the ball faster. And that's fine. The Packers can apply pressure when it's 
a obvious passing situation, but the only way to do that is to stop the run. So that that's how I think the defense has to fare on on Sunday against the Raiders. Yeah, and uh, I think your your big you know your your what you're saying there is extremely important. Winning uh, first down, but it's uh, winning first and second down overall, fourth, third, and long. Uh, you know, the, the Raiders are actually able to go downfield more than the Cowboys were. Um, but you saw when the Packers forced the Cowboys to go, uh, you know, third and eight or uh, longer, the Cowboys were typically stuck in fourth and one or fourth and two after it. Um, they, uh, that's what, the, that's what they, uh, they did to the Cowboys, and they got to do that to the, you know, do that to the, uh, the Raiders as well. We do got to take a quick break. Um, do you have a, a uh, take, uh, thank one of our uh, our sponsors for the show, uh, Gridiron Bowls. So thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Green Bay Packers edition of The Grueling Truth. We'll be back in about a minute. This is former All-Pro Leon Searcy. I've got a new interactive app called Gridiron Mode, where you get to call the plays, offense, or defense, and a live NFL game. You get to interact with other fans, pick the play, pick the call. That's Gridiron Mode. And welcome back to the Green Bay Packers edition of the Grill and Truth, brought to you by Gridiron Mode, a new interactive app to let you call what you think the offense or defense will do in a live NFL game, and then see what others around the country pick as well. That's Gridiron Mode. Go to gridironmode.com. Tom. Once again, I'm Evan Wittallison, joined by Troy Okotradovic, and uh, we spent the first portion of the show talking about the, the the Packers' defense versus the Raiders' offense, but now it's time to talk Packers' offense versus this Raiders' defense. And the Raiders' defense right now currently rank 23rd at points allowed, 25th in yards, 28th in passing yards, and 12th against the run. So, Last week, the Cowboys struggled against the, uh, against the run, great against the pass. This week, the Raiders horrible against the pass, uh, okay against the run. Now, I hope this isn't a game the Packers decide they're not going to uh, run the ball much. Now, they go back to a, a, a dominant passing game. Now, the Raiders, led by Mario Edwards, the second-round pick. Uh, then they got Bianco Autry as well. Um, um, he what, did initially agree to a free agent deal with Green Bay after the 2014 draft, but failed physical and then signed with the Raiders. Pretty slow, but he's got long arms. Uh, they have Dan Williams, Justin Ellis, uh, and pulling off the defensive line. Linebacker, uh, the, they're, they are Curtis Lofton at one spot, uh, Malcolm Smith at another, and the strong, strong side linebacker, Khalil Mack, 6'2", 255. Um, he uh, is currently leads the NFL in sacks at 14. He's 4'5", 40, very disciplined, very big energy player. He's explosive, quick off the ball. And he had five sacks last week. Five. You heard me right. Five sacks last week. Khalil Mack is the, the stud of the Raider defense. And then they have the ageless one in Charles Woodson at safety, but overall the secondary for the Raiders aren't very good. But so the Packers should be able to throw the ball a little bit against this team. But the key is going to be slowing down Khalil Mack. He's a guy that can cause problems to the passing game, and if he doesn't get sacks, <clears throat> just causing that disruption to the quarterback could be quite uh, quite troublesome, screwing up that timing. And the Packers struggle with uh, the timing between the quarterback and the wide receivers as it is anyways right now. That could be quite hard on Rodgers. Um, you know, Packers wide receivers, as we know, uh, James Jones, Randall Cobb, uh, uh, they have Devontae Adams and Jared Abaderas and um, – Jeff Janis, it doesn't look like Todd Montgomery is going to be ready to go. And unfortunately, um, uh, Devontae Adams missed practice today, was limited in practice today with the foot uh, issue. He was getting checked up by the medical staff when the media walked in per Michael Cohen on, uh, 
on Twitter. So hopefully that's nothing serious. Um, Tom Montgomery had another setback as he didn't practice at all. And uh, this is a game that the Packers offensive line needs to come out and dominate if the Packers want to win. Eddie Lacy's got to run, uh, got to run with that attitude again. Um, he needs to run with the attitude again that he did uh, last week, and the Packers should be okay if he can. Um, it's going to be much dip- more difficult running against this Raider front seven than it was against the the front seven for the uh, for the Cowboys. But they're going to have to be balanced again. Um, if they if they become a one dimensional pass game team against this Raider defense, Khalil Mack's going to go all out in the the Raiders are going to have a huge game. So if I'm the Packers, I would look to do balance again. Um, you know, Ken Norton uh, Jr., the defensive coordinator for the Raiders, they do play a 4-3 under and a 3-4 looks, um, prefers man coverage. And the Packers tend to struggle in man coverage, so that's going to be kind of unfortunate. But <laughs> game plan rise, Mike McCarthy's calling the plays again. And they're going to have to kind of do a little bit what they did last week, and that's uh, get the ball into Cobb's hands and let Cobb uh, athleticism take over. They moved Cobb around a lot uh, last week in the slot, in the backfield, uh, motion. They're going to have to do the same if they want to win this game. The keys are easy, protect Rodgers and get this be balanced out offense. And they got to win first and second down, be in third and short situations. Because the one situation with Oakland you do not want to be in is a third and uh, seven or longer because Max is going to pin his ears back and Rodgers is going to, you know, no pun intended, is going to feel like he got ran over by a Mack truck if uh, they get into third and long situations. But you know, what are your thoughts on the Packers offense? Well, I think you have brought up a couple of key points. I mentioned defensively winning on first down. The Packers have to win on first down. And, You know, everybody, Mike McCarthy went back to to calling the plays, and that's great. But I think the overall philosophy, Evan, that the Packers had against the Cowboys is the way that they're going to win. If they want to win the NFC North and they want to advance in the playoffs, they're going to have to do exactly what they did against the Cowboys. You mentioned a balance attack. You know, they don't have to run it, you know, if – if they ran it as much as they did against the Cowboys in every game here on out, that means they're probably winning, which is a good thing. I just want to make sure that there's an even balance. And if you look at when this offense struggled, and there was and Rogers, you played a sound sound clip, Evan, about checking out and checking plays, and he's giving credit to that it was the right play called against the right defense. Okay, so be it. You know, what that's telling me is Rodgers has a, a lot more comfort level with Mike McCarthy calling the plays. And, you know, I, I guess when you look at it, it's been a while that they those two were together. And so maybe they're on the same page a little bit. But if the Packers cannot establish the run against the Raiders, I think they can do enough in the passing game against the Raiders secondary but I don't want it to be that way. I want to see them flex their muscles again, old school, run the football, use that duo, use that Eddie Lacy, James Starks duo, almost 200 yards against the, the Cowboys, who have a pretty darn good run defense. They're going up against the Raiders, like you said, that do pretty well against the run. But I think this is a game where the Packers can do the same thing where they can get Lacey and Starks involved. And it was nice to see Starks getting involved in the passing game, Evan. You know, he had a receiving touchdown. And those are things that we've talked about, those little swing passes, the screen passes. Those are ways to establish the passing game and really slow a defense down. And so I really, I hate to say bring the same game plan to Oakland, but really if they bring the same game plan to Oakland, very similar teams in my mind, the Packers can be successful. But if Rodgers throws the ball 40 times, I think it's a long day for Green Bay. They can probably get away with the win because, like I said, this Oakland Raider pass defense, probably not as good as what the Cowboys was, but I don't want to see that. 
I think they've got to establish themselves, the philosophy and their identity moving into the playoffs. I can't remember the last time you heard a Packers team run first past second. But they've got the tools to do it, Evan. That offensive line played really good. Hopefully that was the confidence booster that they needed. I've been I, I'm, I've been their biggest supporter all year, even when they were playing bad. I've always said this can be one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. And I think they played with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder last week, and they opened up some nice holes and allowed a lot of good things to happen in the run game. So uh, I really think they just need to be balanced, like you said. And if they do that, they should be okay. But I'd like to see I'd, – I'd even like to see Starks involved in the passing game a little bit more, Evan. Maybe get him five to six touches uh, in screen passes or swing passes uh, because I like Starks' athleticism in the open field. Uh, he runs with a vengeance when he's out on the flank and gets that ball in his hand on those passes. And, you know, mix him in there, catch the defense off guard. I think you can see Starks with five to six catches – and, you know, 50 to 60 receiving yards. You know, he has the ability, and, and he's elusive enough once he gets in the open field to get some very good positive yards. That's all I have. Yeah, and the last time they were more of a run-first team, and I believe when Amon Green was here, um, Amon Green, uh, I think, I believe, set the Packer record for rushing yards in a year. A season when I believe, uh, over 1,800 yards. I believe that was the last time they were uh, – they were the uh, a run first team. Now looking at the time, we do have to uh, uh, make our, our predictions. Um, the predictions right now, uh, some uh, people are making, or is going to be a close game. Uh, some uh, scouts and assistants, according to Bob McGinn's article on JS Online, twenty four twenty three, twenty seventeen, thirty one twenty one, twenty three thirteen, and twenty four twenty one. Packers are going to win in all these, but very close game. I think it's going to be probably more of the 34 to 30, uh, 31 uh, type game, 35, 31 uh, Green Bay getting the victory. So I say 35 to 31 Green Bay. It's going to be a, a much higher scoring game for both teams. Uh, but I, I think the Packers end up getting the victory, 35 to 31. What's your prediction? Well, you know, I got I got to keep things going the way that I that I have. Uh, I was pretty darn close last week when I said twenty eight to nine. I really believe Evan the way that I saw this offense play last week against the Cowboys against this Raiders defense that I don't think is as good. I think the Packers put up forty two, forty two points on Sunday. I think they allowed twenty one. I think it's forty two twenty one Packers. I think they cruise to the West Coast and I think they cruise back home with an easy victory, 42-21. to 21. Uh, I just like the way that they've been, they've been playing. And Mike McCarthy calling the plays and the philosophy of run first, I think that opens up that passing game. And like I said, the Raiders not very good against the pass. I think you actually can see this game, the Packers amassing 500 total yards of offense, 300 passing and 200 rush, rushing. Because I think they've got something going now with McCarthy and his philosophy And like I said, the comfort level with Rodgers and McCarthy bringing the plays in, you know, is that stubbornness by by Rodgers and maybe didn't give Clements a fair shake? I don't know. But it was just very evident that Rodgers looked a lot more comfortable against the Cowboys, and I think he trusts McCarthy more than he did Clements. And I think it's going to pay big dividends going out to Oakland. So I say 42-21. Cool. Well, thirty-five, thirty-one. my prediction, 42-21. We'll be back next week to see who was right in their prediction. Thank you so much for listening. Um, you've been listening to the Green Bay Packers edition of The Grueling Truth.